Worldwide, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis seem to be on the rise. Right now in the United States, estimates are about one and a half million people, a third of whom are children, suffer from inflammatory bowel disease. The Cedars-Sinai Wajaya Foundation IBD Research Institute is charting the future for treatment of inflammatory bowel diseases and is changing the paradigm for researchers devoted to finding a cure. IBD is very complex and there are many, many different ways to lead to inflammation and thus many different ways that ultimately we think will be required in order to effectively treat individuals on a personalized basis. Dr. Stefan Targan has assembled an IBD treatment and research dream team in an ideal environment at Cedar sinai It's based really on getting all uh, areas of science in one place together so that not only will they communicate occasionally or communicate when they have a finding, but on a daily basis. The Institute is based on fostering interactions that will accelerate the pace of discovery from the bench to the bedside. Being a basic scientist at Cedars, it's part of my you know, normal day-to-day -day life that I interact with physicians, people who are taking care of patients, and that prompts different kinds of conversations. To collectively have all of us in one place together, in addition to all of this research and discovery here, you're really getting the best of both worlds. We've expanded our group and we have uh, over 80 people that are involved in research. What's special here is that we have a 360 degree view of inflammatory bowel disease that consists of translational and genetic research, clinical care, clinical research, basic science research, surgical research, as well as drug discovery and development. The 360-degree program is designed to optimize bi-directional translational research to understand the causes of these highly complex disorders. So translational research, the aim of it is to try and bridge the gap between what's happening in basic science and clinical practice. So if we make an advance in basic science, it's to take that directly through to the clinic and impact on patient care and patient outcomes. It's also a really nice motivation for us because we actually see ultimately what we are doing in the lab later on leads to improvement for the treatment of patients and finding new medication. The Institute uses innovative approaches to care for thousands of children and adults with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. We have a very large clinical program at Cedar sinai We see a lot of patients. Uh, we probably have 4,000 patients under our direct care, but also see many patients as one-time consultations coming from uh, outside our region. With thousands of patients as our research partners, the Institute has established the world's largest biorepository of IBD specimens and data, known as the Myriad Biobank. The Myriad Repository is a collection of samples that we have been collecting over the last 20 or so years, and I think it must be the largest IBD repository in the world. The thing that holds this all together from a computational point of view is our database that allows us to link all of this information. So everybody is potentially a research candidate. We want to bring together an experience of hundreds of patients so that we can, we can learn how the disease is going to behave in your group and how we can predict that in your group. Basic science researchers across all major disciplines incorporate novel in vivo and in vitro technologies to define the underlying mechanisms of disease. I'm really interested in how specific cell uh, population ultimately uh, affect the disease development. We need to look at those particular signaling pathways. And once you understand how each of those processes contributes to how those patients manifest their inflammatory bowel disease, you can better treat them with the, with the treatment modality that we have today and the ones that are in the pipeline. There have been very rapid advances in our understanding of the genetics and the CEDARS group has contributed to that in a huge way. We have a, a lab that's just completely dedicated to doing the genetics of inflammatory bowel disease and I think that we're probably the only center in the world that has that. And the challenge is to figure out what those genes do and how can we use the biological information to uh, um, do therapies. Sophisticated genetic technology has facilitated great progress in the study of IBD, but our work in epigenetics shows that the environment can influence how our genes behave and offers promising insights for improving treatments. Your DNA is the hardware, the epigenetics is the software. They allow you a lot more flexibility than what you have as far as gene therapy. This would be uh, 
uh, a much easier mechanism to be able to alter something that has gone wrong and set you back on the right track. The microbiome, or the community of microbes in our GI tract, holds important clues for unraveling these diseases. Inflammatory bowel disease has been uh, understood for a long time to be, in some ways, an inappropriate inflammatory immune response against the microbes uh, in the gut. And so we're very interested in trying to understand then how the immune system is sensing these microbes in the gut and how that might go awry. Stem cell research is a powerful tool for understanding the contributions of genetic alterations and the environment to the development of IBD. The main objective of the GUT program here in the IBD Institute is to develop a disease in a dish model of inflammatory bowel disease. We have a renewable source of genetic material from all our IBD patients. We're able to start characterizing what effects these genetic alterations have a unique program partners surgical researchers with basic and translational researchers to make a difference for patients undergoing surgery for IBD. It's sort of the end game, if you will, to bringing together all of these science, particularly looking at surgical outcomes. I'm one of the few surgeons, as part of a team that we have here, that actually follows the patients after surgery as well to optimize their outcome and also to see if we can actually predict their outcome based on things that we're doing before and after surgery. The Cedar sinai Wajaya Institute is the only IBD center with its own in-house target discovery and biomarker development unit. We work with biopharmaceutical partners, help them develop these prioritized therapeutics so that we can push these drugs to market much quicker. And we can do that all in one spot and we can do that much faster than what the current environment in biopharmaceutical companies allows them to do. There must be very few people in the world with inflammatory bowel disease whose lives have not been touched by something that's happened within this program. I think we're, we're very much at the, the precipice of really harnessing many aspects of what we've just discussed uh, to, together to really accelerate uh, personalized medicine. And it's always been the vision that uh, when the patient first comes to a physician, they're first diagnosed. They're not just diagnosed as having the disease, but we have all the, the different um, details of what that person's disease is going to be like. You know, someone who comes in thinking they really had no other options, uh, all of a sudden realizes that they have not just one option, but actually a, a, like a number of different options uh, to choose from. I think patients leave with a sense of, of hope. Through partnership with patients, scientists, and industry, the Cedar sinai Wajaya Institute is changing the paradigm for inflammatory bowel disease.